So, Steve, congratulations, uh, 2022 Senior Max Grand Prix winner. Has it sunk in yet? Not really. Uh, I think it'll sink in tonight once you know we get the uh, awards out the way. But it's just been such a mega week, you know, a lot has gone on. Um, P1 in every qualifying session and then to get the win in the race has been absolutely fantastic. But, um, you know, a lot went on in that race, it, it, even though we had a pretty good lead. It wasn't uh, it wasn't so simple, we had a few bike issues along the way, but it's starting to sink in now. But uh, yeah, fantastic. Do you feel a bit of pressure heading into the race? Obviously being P1 throughout the whole week and everybody talking you up to be the next winner of the Manx Grand Prix. Did you feel that pressure? Not really. Um, you know, I've got good lads around me to sort of um, keep the head nice and level. I did think in my head though, you know, we've, we've been P1 every qualifying session and I just hope that it would come together for the race. You know, it would have just been a, a bit of a bad story if we'd put it on P1 every qualifying session, not done it in the race. So just to get that over the line, you know, I was screaming at myself in my helmet and just to bring her home was, was fantastic. And to be honest, from the start that I saw, you didn't have the best start to the race, did you? Just talk us through what happened. Yeah, obviously we ran out of fuel um, at Bedstead the other night. So we had a little think about how we can squeeze some extra fuel in there and maybe it was just a you know a little bit too much um i don't know what we, we don't know like we'll never know but um the bike was just misfiring as i said off the line and then it was misfiring all the way down to balacrane um just cutting out every now and again and i just thought oh, i went for a long day here and i nearly pulled in but i thought no I'll just keep going and you know luckily sort of by the end of glen helen the bike had fixed itself so um, yeah we had that and then there was a little bit of an issue um, with the clutch as well but uh, yeah so it wasn't all plain sailing um, but the start didn't help but yeah just got the head down and, and tried to pull it back together. Just talk to us about this week because it's been a fairly relaxed week from what I've seen but has that helped your preparation heading in to what has been probably the biggest race of your career so far? Uh, how do you mean? Sorry. So, in terms of like just a relaxed feel around the paddock, and oh, of course. nobody really not, not it's not like it doesn't feel like a TT. It's more mm. of a, it is a Manx Grand Prix, so it's a little bit more relaxed. There's a little bit less people here. Does that help your preparation in terms of sort of going in under the radar a little bit? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, the Manx has always had a quite a relaxed atmosphere, um, and you know, putting it on sort of P1 every night. I was sort of waiting for the other lads to catch up, you know, and. You know, there's some really fast riders here, so I couldn't really relax too much. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I put in a lot of hard work in the lead up to this. Um, lost a lot of weight since the last time I was here. Um, you know, been training really hard um, off the bike. So, you know, I have put that hard work in uh, over the winter and the off season, which has obviously paid yeah. off now. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the Manx has always been a, a nice, relaxed atmosphere and um, it's just been a, a really good week, really. And plus as well as I've had a great team around me to, to you know, keep everything together. Talk us through the, that sort of preparation, because not many people know that you are a nutritionist. I believe you're a nutritionist, are yeah, you, for yeah. Red Bull athletes out in Austria? So yeah. that's quite a specific job, and you, you're obviously not based in the UK, so you're based abroad. So how tough is it for you to then come to the Isle of Man, probably with not a lot of racing behind you this year? Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, moving to a new country was a big job anyway. Um, and that really put me on the back foot in terms of budget you know I, I spent a lot of money with the move um, but it just added a lot of extra cost in terms of getting here because then I had to factor in extra you know planes and then still getting the ferry and things so it did make the job a little bit more difficult and then you know when you've been racing a while in the UK you build up that network you get to know people and you know we, we had to basically start again from day one and you know there was a time where I thought do I still want to you know do I still want to do this but luckily I you know met some good guys over um, in Talgo where, where I work um, literally just bumped into a guy in Spa of all places um, he was wearing some racing gear and uh, you know I asked him in, in, in German you know do you race bikes and he said yeah you know you should come to the garage and that just sort of started the ball rolling so it, it did make the job a little bit more difficult um, you know the extra financial costs as well um, but obviously we're glad we did it now looking at it then this year you were supposed to do the, the TT I believe so was it a big decision for you to not go to the TT and come and do this and have another year under your belt in the Manx and then potentially look to grow in for next year at the TT yeah massively so it was a big disappointment to not go to the TT because 
after we had the podium in 2019. Um, you know, sold that bike and then bought the BMW specifically for the TT. And then, you know, we had COVID and everything else. So been riding that BM on the short circuits. Uh, we did a road race uh, a few weeks ago on that. So, you know, the decision to pull out of the TT was was a really hard one, you know, because I've been really looking forward to doing that for a while. Um, but once we made that decision, you know, it was a natural progression then to sort of think, well, you know, it was do or die. Do we do we pack in racing? Um, I don't really do it for the short circuits, you know, I just do it for, for the Isle of Man, basically. Um, so to make that decision was it was pretty simple. Um, I've known Alistair for a few years and it was just starts with a text message, you know, and um, he got back to me a few weeks later and said, if you want to do the Manx, we can. And that just gave me the confidence to get going then because I knew I knew he'd put a good bike underneath me and have a good team. So it was just 100% focus on the Manx. Just for the viewers that probably, like I say, are not going to know who you are, but they probably are going to know who you are from now. Um, how difficult is it to come racing at the Manx in terms of funding it? Because you haven't got a lot of big sponsors behind you and it is literally from what I have seen yourself. So is it really difficult for you to, to get here and to do this? Yeah, massively so. And you know, like, it's, like you said, it's just me, my dad and uh, Stuart Blythe, you know, Blythe's Garage. They, um, like I said, we, we, we're, not, we're not from a lot of money. And it was just like, let's have a, here's a couple of quid, let's go racing, you know, and Alice has helped me out massively as well with the bike. So it is really difficult. And then, like I said, when you're in Austria, you've got to factor in all that additional costs. And, you know, believe it or not, it's actually a bit more expensive over there to, to race, you know, like I think we're talking 290 euros for a rear tyre. And, you know, people forget that it's not just about here and now, you've got to do several weekends away racing and you know each of those cost thousands of, of euros obviously over in Austria and it's getting that together um, which ultimately what stopped us going to the TT so um, like I said it's not just about here it's, it's the whole you know everything you've got to do before you know and even this year there was new regulations you know so I needed a new helmet um, new leathers and everything else which you know adds thousands to the bill and you know that was a big that was a big push. So are we going to be expecting to see you back at the TT with a Red Bull helmet on? Are you uh, going to be asking for a bit of cash? Yeah, it's not as simple as that, <laughs> you know, um, but hopefully we'll be up well. If everything goes well, we'll be at the TT. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see what sort of colours and things we'll be in. Spot on, well, Steve, congratulations and well done. Thank you, mate.